Greetings and welcome back to another episode of Ether Plus Law Modding Tutorials and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make a custom challenge. A lot of these challenges just start out with different starting items, but in this case I'm going to show you how to do a little bit more. What we'll be making is a challenge which will spawn spider every half a second, which won't deal any contact damage to you, but essentially what will happen is the more time you'll spend in a room, the more spiders there will be and the harder it'll be to dodge and actually shoot the enemies you want to kill. And once you kill all of the original enemies of the room, then the doors will open and you can go in the next room and all of that bank happens again. So first of all, let's check the file structure. In here, if you go under the content folder, you can find the challenges.xml. And the challenges.xml in this case just indicates which of the challenges you're adding to the game. In this case, you can see that there's a, just a giant comment which indicates all of the attributes and this is actually taken from the original file. And you can see that there's just a bunch of things you can change here. You can change the starting items, the starting trinkets, the pills, the cards, you can change which player you're playing as, so you can play as Maggie, Isaac, Apollyon, whatever. Uh, you can change the curse filter, so with which curse you're starting, you can change the achievements. So let's say you have a challenge which requires me Mega Blast, but of course you don't want the player to play th the challenge if they don't have Mega Blast, so you could lock it behind the achievement. You can of course set the stage up until which point you go, you can set even if the player can shoot, etc, etc. There's a bunch of things here, and what's the best thing about it is you don't even have to write any code to make your own custom challenge. You would just add this challenges.xml, you would just set up the challenge like I did, and you could upload it to the workshop with just one line in the main.lua code. In this case, what I did, I, I created a new challenge called it Spiders, then stage is 11, which I believe is the final stage, and I'm starting out with three items, the Bursting Sack, the Betrayal, and the Box of Spiders. Now that we have that set up, let's jump into the main.lua code. In here, like I mentioned before, if you just wanted to do the challenges.xml and write no code of your own, the only thing you would have to do is just write this piece of code. Register mod, the name of your mod or your, or your challenge, and then set the, the second parameter is one to tell the API version. And in this case, what this would do is just register the mod, it would put the challenge in the game and you would be good to go. But in this case, of course, we want to do a little bit more. So what we do the next thing is we get the challenge ID by name. And of course, this is the ID or the name that we put here. And then we just get the ID. In this case, I believe it will be 36th because there's 35 challenges already in the game. So this is then registered as 36th. And in here we have a new function called spawn spiders. And what this function does essentially, it's called every single post update, which happens about every frame. And we check if the game's challenge, and essentially this game's challenge will be whatever challenge you're onto, or if you just play a normal run, I believe this will be just empty. And we compare if the game's challenge is the same as the ID of the challenge that we programmed into the game. And if it is, then what we do is we get the frame count of Isaac and every 30 frames, which is every half a second, because the game runs at 60 frames per second, we spawn a spider. Uh, at a random position. And then we just save that single variable, that entity, into the E variable. And what I do here is I cast it to the NPC entity. And this is done so I can actually change some parameters later on. I check if that conversion was successful, and then what I do here, which is why I actually casted it to the NPC entity variable, or I mean class, uh, I just set its parameter can shut the doors to false. Usually that is true to NPCs, which means that they actually keep the doors locked, so you have to kill all of them to open. But in this case we don't want that, because if the spiders would actually block the doors from opening, they could just spawn and they would spawn faster, you can actually kill them and you will get soft lock. So in this case what I just do is every spider respawn, we just set its parameter can shut doors to false, so when we kill all of the original enemies and other spiders, then the doors will open. So let's jump into the game and I'll show you how this actually works. Welcome to the game. And now in the menu, the first thing we have to do if we want to exit the challenges, we have to go into the challenges menu. And in here, what you have to do is press tab, or at least in my case, you can have any other key to access the custom challenges. And in here, you should see the challenge you actually name. And this name should correlate to whatever you put in the challenges.xml folder. So let's just start it up and see if it works. So once we start this up, you can see that the spiders start spawning, but they don't deal any contact damage to us because we have the bursting sack. If you go in a room with actual enemies, you can see that the spiders just keep spawning and the doors are still locked because the original enemies are in there. If you just kill this uh, putter, I think they're called putters, you can see that even though there are spiders in the room because their property is can shut doors is set to false, they don't really keep the doors closed. And as soon as we go to the next room, even though it's really annoying because there's so many of spiders, uh, the, the, the spiders respawn and they actually start spawning again and it's a fun challenge in some ways, probably mo mostly annoying, but it's more of a proof of concept. I'm just trying to show you that you can actually change the challenges, not only in the traditional sense of giving you some starting items, but you can also code some really cool interactions in, in the Lua files and then make those challenges apply a bit differently. 
Welcome to the end of the video, and I was actually debating whether I should make this video or not. I just felt like it was covered before and there's really no point in making it. If people want to make this, it's quite simple, they can probably figure them out themselves. But I felt it was important for me to include, just for the completion's sake. I didn't get a lot of requests on this, how to make challenges, but still I felt like the playlist, if I'm actually providing a playlist with, with, with mods, it should be on there just to actually showcase how it's done. And I think that showing you how to do it with Lua as well would does open up the field to make some really, really cool challenges. And of course, there's a lot of challenges already out there. Most of them just change the XML. But now that you have the knowledge of how to code that yourself, you can actually start making some really wacky things. You can make bloat spawn in every room, which is devilish, but you could do that if you want and just lock it behind the challenge. Obviously, you don't want that... Uh, in the actual game, but it it could be fun as a challenge, I guess, or, or you could make maybe make cons explode whenever you pick them up or whatever. You know, there's just a ton of wacky ideas you can incorporate uh, if you actually combine these challenges and then the code, which I showed you how to do. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you next time.